All right, well, welcome back to Exit 45 Restorations. And today we're gonna get to disassemble the, the motor. So I pulled the 390. All right, let's go do it, come on. All right, so here she is. Uh, partially tore down. Uh, this is one of the things I pulled the intake off, tossed it in the pile. I'm not using it. I got going to get a different one. Uh, the heads, the bolts have already been pulled. It's just a couple bolts holding it on. We'll pull them. And uh, once we get to that, you know, we need to strip the front of this engine down. You know, I got a little bit of work ahead of us, but not a lot. I mean, the exhaust has already been taken off. Um, so there are some things that we've already done. I did it a long time ago when I first pulled the engine. Uh, and I wanted to just do a real quick check to make sure what the cylinder walls look like and things like that. So, And we're going to be doing a few things different going together with this. We're going to have uh, electronic fuel injection. And then we're going to... Oh, hey, Pep. What you doing, Kiki? That was a quick drive-by. Anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, uh, yes, uh, fuel injection. So we're going to go multi-port fuel injection. So we'll get a brand new uh, intake manifold. We're going to, internally, we're going to go with a, a roller cam. Uh, so uh, that'll eliminate, you know, that that problem that seems to be going around right now with wiping flat tabbit cams. Uh, other than that, the heads need to be broke down. I got to figure out if they've got hardened seats on them or not. And if they don't, then that's going to have to be done. I just got a lot of, I got a lot of unknowns on this 390 uh, engine. And it's time to figure it out. So let's get at it. Fuel pump's loose. So we're going to go ahead and get that out right away. Get that out of our way. All right, there we go. Since uh, this engine is going to go back together as a fuel injected engine, we will not be putting this back on and we'll be putting a cover plate. There you go, that's off. Next thing, let's go ahead and attack getting the uh, oil filter uh, bracket and housing and all that, whatever you call it. Get this off of here. Okay, we're all right. Oil on the floor. There we go. Anyway, there you go. I guess there's still a little bit of oil in it. Uh, before I press on up here, let's go ahead and just pull these off for now since they're 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 loose. Uh, let's get them off of here. I'll get them set up somewhere. Flip them over and we can take a look at uh, what kind of condition we're, we're in on these. All right, here we go. Okay, so, uh, I mean, near as I can tell, I don't seem to have any valve sticking. I don't see anything that's burnt. So all the valves look to be in pretty decent shape. Yeah, okay. So all in all, it looks pretty good in here. I don't see anything. Again, it's going to be hard to notice if there's any cracking going on. All right, well, let me let me spin it around and see what the other side looks like. And these would be the medium riser intakes. I think everything looks pretty good. I don't see anything glaring at this point. So we'll take that as a win. Let's uh let's get the other one off and then we'll press on from there. Head number 2 is really more of the same. Uh, I don't see any issues. Everything looks good. One of the things I was checking before, I also, when I took this apart and I pulled the head gasket off, 
is I don't see any evidence where there were areas of the uh, head gasket where it was blown. I don't see any passages between anything. Head number two, in same as condition as the other one, Look, looks pretty good so far. I got the uh, exhaust manifolds off already, uh, so I just wanted to bring them over here and show them to you, but I don't know, these don't look terrible. I mean, they're really in good shape. I don't see any issues with them. Get into the lifter valley here and I've soaked down the lifters a little bit. You can see I pulled one out. See, they've been sitting a while. They, uh, it takes a little bit of back and forth, just working it slowly and they, and it comes out. It's just, uh, looks like on the back side of the lifter here, it's just got a little gum up, you know, gum, gumminess or whatever, just a little buildup on there. So, but it comes out, just got to play with it a little bit and it comes out. So I'm going to soak them a little bit, see if I can't continue pulling them out. All right, let's see. Let's see what we can do here. Yeah, they're just a little, well, you know, they've been sitting in there a long time. This, this car and this engine all sat for 40 years before I got it. The guy that I bought it from said he had it sitting in his, his yard for, his junkyard for 40 years, just sitting. Yeah, they're just... Gotta work them in and out a little bit. Eventually they'll come. Patience. Which you guys know I'm not that good at. Steam ahead, steam ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's just slowly, but it's getting getting farther and farther. Just gotta keep working it. Just, just don't wanna force them. Because you can do some damage in there with it, you know, trying to pull it through and scar your bore bores up. You don't want to do that, so just taking it easy. There you go. See? Same thing. It's nothing wrong with them necessarily. It's just been sitting so long. This area here has got to work its way through slow, slowly. So, they'll come out. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest pulled out. You don't need to watch that. So as you can see, I got them all out. They're in order as they came out. Uh, I'm only doing this so that I can keep track of where I see maybe there's some problems and I know which cylinder and all that. Anyway, so I mean, if we look through these, there's not anything that overly concerns me on any of them there's a there's a few of them that show a little bit of cupping but it's really really minor they all look pretty good i don't see any evidence of anything really terrible happening inside of here so far everything everything seems to be okay if we come over here dad's starting to pop off some bracket uh, so we can get to the water pump now that we've got uh, the block itself essentially uh, stripped down on the top side last thing we need to do before we start getting into any big things is get the water pump and getting the pulley off so let's get it almost think this is like an episode of engine masters don't you What's that? Engine amateurs. Oh, that's. <laughs> did you hear him? Engine amateurs. All right, so he's right. So our water pump is no good. She's froze up. We got something on here. Uh, oh. It's called dirt. <laughs> no, I thought yeah, it's not one of them. Pegs pushed over it. All right, we got all the bolts out of this, so we're gonna go ahead and pop it off. 
There we go. Well, that come out pretty easy. All right, probably not a difficult to figure out why it seized up. <laughs> There's an awful lot of rust in there. Oh, yeah. We got the three bolts in here broke loose. We'll be able to, should be able to pull the pull those out now. And then we got to get the main crank bolt loose. And since my impact wrench died, it's making it challenging. So let's get these off and then we'll get that crank bolt off. All right, so we're gonna use a little bit of leverage here to kind of hold that still. So we're gonna put these back in here just to make sure that this pulley, yes, which we're using as our leverage doesn't spin. Yep. There we go. <laughs> All right. Pulley comes off, and then we'll have to press the uh, press the balancer off. All right, we got the polar set up on it, and I got a feeling that this thing's going to just want to turn on us. Well, let's move it. I guess it's coming off. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we got it. We'll come off. It'll knock off now. All right. There we go. And you can see here, and you can see in there, there's a keyway. And you can see here, I'll bring you in a little bit closer. Keyway or a key. You can see the key there on the shaft. We need to pull that off of there and not lose that. There you go. So that's yeah. it, very important. Just a key. All right, and then this pulls right out of there. It's just like a spacer sleeve, it just goes in there. Well, uh, once I'm done cleaning this, one of the things you'll find it, if there's too big of a uh, wear here, that it can leak from there. So we'll want to check that once we get it good and clean. Popping off the time machine cover now. Okay, so we got all the bolts out. So you can look, there's bolts here. There's also bolts up bolts underneath that are associated with the oil pan. There we go. All right. So, yeah, this thing's not bent into either. I can see the, uh, there's no RTV squeeze out or anything like that, so. All right. All right, we got that broke loose. Slide that off and we should be able to slide the uh, timing chain set off. Not really sure what you got to do to get that off. I'm not. Yeah. Not really sure. There's a, I mean, the bolt that was in it went in there. So I think it just needs to be knocked off. Um, I think it just needs to be pried off a little bit. Nice and easy, slow. Don't break it. It doesn't matter. I'm going to put a new one on, but. Still. Yeah, I think you're you're doing the right thing. Keep going. So work your way around. There we go. Keep working it. There we go. She's coming. Okay. Not graceful, but it came off. You slide all that off now. All right. All right, guys. So that's the uh, top end tear down. So the next thing we're going to do, we'll put the uh, bolt back in here so we can slide the camshaft out. And then we're going to turn this thing over and start tearing down the bottom end.
So you want to grab that bolt. Yep. Just screw it back in there. And then we'll see if we can't work that camshaft out of there. There's nothing holding it in there. Is it just bearings? Those Allen? Those are like Allen bolts retaining that camshaft in there. All right, let's let's uh, let's figure out. I want to say uh, I've seen something, but I've never seen these. I thought it was a thin or like a shallow flathead screw that I've seen in these, not these. That's interesting. I've not seen that. There we go. So we got the one out and the other one, they, uh, they were, it was a lot tighter than I thought they would be, but uh, they were in there. They were in there pretty good. So I don't know any of you guys have tore apart an FE motor. Tell me if you think that's standard or not. I believe at this point we should be able to get up on it. Never mind. I can do it with my finger. There hasn't been oil running through this engine in 40 years. So everything's, everything's going to be a little bit tight coming out. The starter's out. Yeah, I think it's just going to have to be. All right, we're just going to have to work this thing a little bit, try to get it to loosen up. No, I don't want to come back out. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Just nice and easy. Come on. There we go. There we go. Yeah, it's tight at all. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to try and spray some lube through these, uh, lifter valley. See if we can't get a little bit of lube on that camshaft. All right, let's give that a try. Let's try and spray down in there some more. See if we can't figure out. There it goes. Woo wee. That was a tight one. Maybe that wasn't getting oil. There we go. That aft one is in. Tight. Give me a little bit of spray in there. Curious to see what the bearings look on on this uh, very aft. Just tight. All right. It was interesting. It was really tight coming out. But it could be just from this thing sitting for so long. And there was just a lot of goop built up. You can see uh, some rust on this end. So that's a little bit curious. That's the first time I've seen that anything internally. All right, let me clean this and then I'll show it to you. All right, let's go ahead and work our way down this cam. So now that we got it cleaned up, uh, you can see the wear on the lobes. Every, every lobe is wore down. I mean, it just, unevenly too. It's like some of them are leaning a little bit. Some are better than others and some, you know, are worse than others. But there's definitely some pretty good wear on this cam. So pretty good idea that I'm changing it, huh? Yeah, look at that one. That one's flatted a little bit. Same with that one. Interesting that these look the way they do, but I don't see any wear on the uh, lifters. The lifters all look pretty good. So let's, uh, let's get back over to the motor. Let's get it turned over and let's get the crank out and see what it looks like. We got the motor flipped over and we're working on 
oil pan bolts now, so. We'll zip these out with a, what do they call these things? Speed bar, right, or something? Yeah. yeah. That's what I always call it. <laughs> I haven't used one of these since I was in the military. And I've had this for a while. <laughs> I just haven't used it. Yeah, it came from my shop. Actually, I got a couple of them. I think yours is in the thing. Oh, probably the same way. I use that for everything. So all you young people watching, this is what we used before air tools and all the niceties. Yeah, all the electric tools and all of those things, we use these. You could uh, you get them done you know, pretty quick. I remember some of the jet engines I worked on at 214 bolts just in one flange. Oh. No, wire, wire safety wires. So yeah, so there's a lot of, a lot of us uh, trying to get those off as quick as you can to get the job done, get that aircraft back in the air. I didn't miss any. All right. There we go. All right, so not terrible in here. I've seen a lot worse. But definitely wasn't getting regular oil changes. All right, so let me uh, let me bring you guys in here and get you a good close up. There you go. Oil pan, oil screen looks pretty clean. I don't see any really major chunks of any kind of thing in there, so that's good. Everything looks all right. I mean, I can't tell yet, obviously, until we start pulling things apart. Just remember my theory. The longer the bolt, the more likely it's going to be fine thread <laughs> and take forever to get out. All right, so, so our rod doesn't look terrible. We're going to replace it anyways. Uh, they have a more stout rod available now. And I'm going to replace this with one of those. And I'll definitely be going on with a new oil pump as well. So. Oh, that's for the pump. Okay, that all looks good. All right, so we're going to put the crank bolt back in and start moving the engine around as necessary to take out the, the pistons. And we'll get our first look at those. I wanted to bring you back in. I got this all out, and I'm getting ready to pull these... Um, rod ends uh, caps here and uh, I was just trying to find out the marking system that's being used in these and you can see if you look here number six can't really see this one down in here but that's number five you can see down in there if you can see it let me get set here You can see that number seven. And then you can see here number eight. So those are marked. And then on this side, you can see number one, number two, number three down there. And I can't really see that one. So I can see those are marked so I know where they go. The only thing I, I'm having trouble with is the markings on these end caps for the main bearings. There's an arrow pointing to the front on this one and this one. 
This one has it somewhat, but it's really hard to see. And this one just doesn't have anything at all. It's just non-existent. So what I'm doing is, and I'm kind of documenting this right now for my, my own purposes, but I know the orientation because you have the uh, 2AE on this side and you have the C on this side and they are all consistent that way. So that allows me to know my orientation on these, which, which way they go f so that it, the, it's facing the forward and back correctly. That's for both my, my knowledge and my purpose for when I go to rebuild this, but as well as you're all, if you're getting into one of these and you see that, there's, a, there's always a way. I'm going to pick up a punch kit and I'll, I'll probably try to do some markings on these as well, but I'm also going to be putting them away over here in order so I'll know exactly where they go. And then this will help me with the orientation front and back. All right. We got this, this one here off. I put the, uh, some fuel hose over the threads. So as we pop this and pop this thing out of here, we're not scarring up the, uh, cylinder walls. So I'm going to go ahead and pop the first one out. We got that one. Okay. Here we go. I'll grab that bearing here in a second, but I don't see any wear. That's good. That they look good. All right. Yeah, rings are all loose, so I don't know. Looks good. You can see there's uh, some scratching in this bearing. It's uh, it's pretty uh, pretty good scratching. Something got in there. Yep, something got in there. Crank looks good. Crank looks good though. There you go. So you can see this other one. Let me see if I can get you a little bit better. You see the wear. So, uh, I mean, this is what I, I expect to see on an engine with about 100,000 miles, uh, you know, from this year. There's just, uh, there's just some wear. Really heavy on the one side, interesting, but otherwise, I mean, that's what I expect to see, some wear. Front of the engine to the back of the engine, you can see they're all laid out. And as you look, you can see the bearings all have pretty much the same wear patterns. So that's good. I didn't see any uh, indications of wear or anything on the piston sleeves all of the rings were loose so that was good so there we go it's all laid out so now we come here you can see they're all out and so far from what we can tell the crank looks pretty good so we'll obviously need to check the main bearings once we get that out that area but so far, everything's looking pretty good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get ready to pull off the main caps and then get that crank out. It's got all the torques broke on all these, so we should be able to just run these out now and start uh, removing these uh, end caps. Whew, 
Ooh, doggy. That one just. There we go. Okay, so this side usually though is not terrible. Well, these are really being a pain. They're tight in there. Been there a while. It's coming ready. All right. All right, so we got some wear on that one. Yep. go all right one crank you can see what the bearings look like down here they don't look terrible the top bearings definitely showed more wear than than those or I guess the bottom if you flip the engine back over all right the uh, those cam bearings though Boy, they didn't look good. They're, they're heavily worn. Do you see them down in there? I'm going to wipe them and clean and make sure that's not just some dark oil or something, but they don't look, they don't look good. Sorry about that. Let me get you in here. Let me get you at a better angle. All right, so if you look down in here, you can see these cam bearings. And look how badly they're burnt. They're all like that. Every one of them. And the only question that I have is the only one that I can see daylight through. You can see right there the daylight through here where the bearing hole is lined up with this right here. So the hole underneath is lined up here. And I believe there's old passages that go into here to feed both the uh, cam and your main bearings. But when I get to the uh, all the others, the hole is facing the side, not facing up so that I can see through this. And I thought that you should be able to see through there. And you can. that's how you know you've got your cam bearing where you want it. But all the cam bearings, except for this front one, are all lined up with the cam bearing facing the side of the engine. Every one of them. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's just they were put in wrong, they spun. I honestly don't know. Uh, I don't have a tool to pull those, so I'm going to have uh, to get one and pull those out. We'll get a better look at them. I'll actually be able to find the oil passage then to see if those are actually lined up or not. Anyway... Um, the, uh, the other side of the bearings, so if I come here, not, not, not in bad shape at all, not, uh, you know, the other side is showing wear, but, uh, that side looked good and they're all the same. Both of the, they're all wear the same, so that side's good and this side's got wear. So... I mean, really, what you got here is a uh, just a, an engine that's worn out. 100,000 miles on it. Back then, that's a, that was a lot of miles on an engine. Back then. So, yeah, 100,000 mile, 100, miles on it, and it's just wore out. All right, I'm going to flip this around and clean out the cylinder wall so I can get a good look at them. Okay, let's let you get a look at these cylinder walls. So, oops. You gotta get a look in there. They're, they're, they're fairly glossy. Uh, there's a hint of the crosshatch in there. Um, but mostly it's, it's kind of got glossed over. Come on, focus. There we go. So, 
There's some uh, vertical scarring, but it's really light. Uh, you know, I don't feel it with my fingernail. And I cannot get this light to help me to save my life. There you go. So they all look pretty close the same. So I, I think the cylinder walls are going to be okay. I'm going to get them measured. I got to get a dial bore gauge. My calipers will they'll measure out here, but they won't. Uh, they won't tell me what's going on down in the hole. All right, so I'm going to clean up the crank, bring it over to the bench, and we're going to pull some calipers and see what we got on that. And just to see what, uh, you know, if there's any wear on that and where we're at, if I need to bring it to machine shop or not. Here we go. Gone through, done some uh, quick checking on this. All of them check good. Uh, right, right at the, the lower limit, but they're good. And I re-zeroed it, and I did it again. I did it three times, so uh, I know we're good. So I'm very happy about that because I really did not want to take this to the machine shop. I really just wanted to polish these up a little bit and um, be able to use it. So I think we're going to be okay. We'll see. All right. One of the things we're going to do now, I want to try and knock out these uh, cam bearings. They look to be in pretty bad shape. Uh, I'd like to get a better look at them, and we're going to replace them anyways. And uh, I've never pulled cam bearings out. Uh, this will be new to me. Uh, borrowed, a, borrowed a friend's tool, and I think I've got it set up right. I think this is the right size, so I guess uh, let's get it in there and see if we can't give it a few whacks and see what we get. So from the way I can gather how this tool works, it's basically a, a friction fit. I'll tighten this until it squeezes up on there. Now we got some good pressure against it, and let's see if we can't tap it out of there. All right, well, that was a big fail. <laughs> All right, so I guess it needs to be tighter, huh? I don't know. Maybe this just isn't the right size. All right, let's, uh, let me look at, see what we got. This next size up is too much, I think. Think. We'll try it. Let's give it a try. I'm more worried about this, the metal part here, that it's going to go through the bearing uh, cavity there. I don't know. I don't want to damage anything. So we'll just, we'll just take it easy, huh? So you can see the bearing race has come out with it. Now I just got to figure out how to, well, never mind, it just slides off. All right, let's get set up for the next one. All right, let's tighten it up. And just so you can see, for those of you who have not done this, like me, you got a nut right here, I hold that, and I can twist the rod here, 
And then that expands the this part of the tool out and it that grabs hold of the bearing and then you got the uh, the metal part here that'll catch it and she'll push it right out uh, at least that's the story and I'm sticking with it right there so yeah let me see if I can't uh, get it set up where you guys can see it coming out better I think I've got it where you can see so let me just point out where we're at. So the, the shaft is right here. And you can see the nut on the other side of here. So this is the, the cam bearing on this side that we're going to be knocking out of there. And you should, if I can hold the camera steady enough while we're doing this, you should be able to see it. I hope that wasn't bouncing around enough. That was not easy, but there you can see here that it's come out. I'm gonna knock the other others out real quick on my own. And uh, I just wanted to try and get something so you guys could see what was going on and how they come out. Uh, you know, pretty simple. Uh, it was my first time doing it and it really wasn't all that difficult. So uh, let me finish this up and then we're gonna take and examine those bearings real quick. All right, all right. As you can see, I've got all of the bearings out there in order as I pulled them. So front of the engine, back of the engine. So let's just start here in front. And let's just rotate this around and we'll see what this bearing, if I can, <laughs> I can get a hold of it. All right, so you can see here, it's not so bad. Looks good there until you get to here. And look at that, it just looks terrible. So I don't know what was going on down in there. If it's just wearing or there was a little bit of oil starvation because they looked like they got burnt in there. So yeah, it doesn't look good. All right, well, that's, that was number one. Really not much difference. The other thing I didn't show, uh, but this is, I guess, uh, similar to a freeze plug. And this goes on the, uh, the very last bearing here on the back side of the engine. And if you can see the, the hole right there, this was plugging that from the outside and you can see it right there. This was, was in there, just had to pop that out so you could pop the bearing out. So, uh, I think that's a, I think that's a teardown, right? There's not much else to do to this besides it needs to be cleaned um, and whatnot. So, but we do have one more thing I want to, I want to go over on and check on this before uh, I wrap this up because I'd like to check these cylinder walls to make sure uh, you know, that we don't have any excessive wear. I don't need to think about having this thing either bored or maybe some oversized rings. Um, you know, I don't know. I won't know until I get this thing measured. So let me get uh, set up for that. What I'm doing right now is going to set up the dial bore gauge. Uh, I've not used a dial bore gauge in my, my lifetime. I've always used the T gauges. So this is a little bit different contraption. But what I've done is I've set my calipers to the, uh, the, the dimension of the bore, what it should be, so uh, 4.05. And then what I'm going to do is hold this inside the calipers to that. And then once I've got it in there, I'm going to hit zero on the, on the dial gauge. All right, I think I got it. Let me just double check. Okay. All right, we're set. Now when I put this in the cylinder, what it should show me is the difference between what it should be and what it is. 
Let's go do it. All right, so let's, let's see what we got. Wow. Unbelievable. You guys are not going to believe this, but this thing is exact, right where it needs to be. Yep. Keeps finding zero. Let's see if you can see what's going on there. So we're just going to rock it and you can see it. we go to zero. Right through the there, we get through zero. All right. I guess you guys can see that, that we're pretty good shape. So it looks like we don't have any real wear on these uh, cylinders. All right. Well, that is really good news. All right. So let me uh, go ahead and check the others, and I'll let you know what I got. Well... I have double checked all of the uh, cylinders. I reset up my uh, gauges, double checked to make sure that I am exactly where I need to be. So I reset up everything and everything came out exactly the same on the second time. So when I go to the book, I should be 4.05 to 4.05 to four and I fall easily within that I am really close to the original size of the bore so that's really good uh, I suspected there might be some some wear but nothing major and I was right uh, the cylinder walls just looked really 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 good and no real scarring on them they just look clean I got a little bit of surface rust from there I'll clean these up and I'll put something on to keep that from happening but Every one of these came out really good. I didn't have any one of these surprise me. They're all the same. So that's good. Anyway, that's where we're at. Uh, we've measured everything. So the next thing I got to do, this thing here, uh, I got to do some porting. I'm not going to go into that. There's some good videos out there. Uh, My Vintage Iron, uh, he does a really good job of showing you all the areas on here that have issues as far as oil flow uh you know like right here's one you can i don't know if you can see in there but that's not very clean there's a lot of you know casting and that's preventing that oil from draining back out and you got a valley right down here so you know you got this hole here which needs to be brought down some so that the oil can get out uh, but you got a spot right here that you can also drill and come right out into here Oops, sorry, you can come right out into here, which will get this lower valley here to drain a little bit better, too. Um, other than that, there's i uh, I'm not going to flip the block over, but where the oil pump fits in, there's there's some mismatch on the drill sizing or the hole sizing. Um, there's just several things on these blocks. These these uh, FE motors were not the best in the oiling system. So I want to go through and clean up all of those issues uh, on on this engine before I take it to the machine shop to have them clean it. Uh, I'm going to have them double check all my measurements. I'll have them put the cam bearings back in, replace the freeze plugs, and then I'll build it back up from there. So, all right, looks good. I'm really happy with uh, the engine. It's the big day. I'm taking it to the machine shop, see if we can't get this stuff cleaned up, uh, checked out really good, just verify my measurements, and, uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll discuss whether we hone it, uh, whether we cut it, what do we do, you know, I don't know if we're going to put hardened seats in the heads or not, I, I, I just don't know, we're going to go over there, we're going to discuss everything, and we'll see where we go from there, but big day, so, all right. That'll probably wrap it up here. Uh, this video is uh, all done, teardown. 
when I get this back from the machine shop, then we will uh, we will come back to this and uh, start a new video on the buildup of the engine. So until then, I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you on the next one.